Welcome to Culture Alley Spanish. Hola, this is Espanol Lesson 12. Let's revise the possessive adjectives we learned in the last lesson. My translates to me. Your informal becomes tu. His, her, or your formal or their is su. Our is translated as nuestro. Your informal and plural translates to vuestro. Very good. Let's also revise the family relations we saw in the last lesson. Father translates to papá or padre. Mother becomes mamá or madre. Parents is translated to padres. Brother is hermano. Sister translates to hermana. Siblings becomes hermanos. Moving on, son is hijo and daughter is translated as hija. Good. Let's look at some more. Grandfather becomes abuelo, while grandmother translates to abuela, and grandparents becomes abuelos. Moving on, uncle is tío, and aunt translates to tía. And lastly, male cousin is primo, and female cousin becomes prima. Great! Let's quickly look at the conversations we saw last time. Hi, Mark. Who is she? Translates to, hola, Mark. ¿Quién es ella? Did you get the translation for who is she? It is, ¿Quién es ella? The reply, hi, she is my sister, Marta, translates to, hola, ella es mi hermana, Marta. Try the translation for she is my sister again. It is, ella es mi hermana. The next question, who is he, becomes, ¿Quién es él? One more time. ¿Quién es él? The response, he is our father, is translated as él es nuestro padre. Did you get that? Try saying he is our father. You'll say él es nuestro padre. Padre. Very good. Now let's see the second part of our conversation. And she translates to y ella. She is our aunt becomes ella es nuestra tía. Try that one more time. She is our aunt. Or ella es nuestra tía. Now Mark's aunt asks, who is she, Mark? Which becomes, ¿Quién es ella, Mark? Mark replies by saying, she is my friend, Lisa, which is translated as, ella es mi amiga, Lisa. So how will you say, she is my friend? You'll say, ella es Mi amiga. Awesome. We talk about our family and pets today. Today we will learn some advanced conversations around talking about our family and pets. So let's get started. Let's look at the first conversation for today. Lisa asks Mark, do you have siblings? Mark replies by saying, yes, I have two siblings. And you? Lisa says, I have one brother and one sister. Mark further checks, do you have pets? Lisa responds, yes, I have a dog and a cat. Mark further adds, good, I have two cats. All right, interesting conversation. Let's learn it step by step. Let's begin by learning how to say, do you have any siblings? For this, let's learn the forms of the irregular verb to have. To have is tener. Can you try that? Tener. 
good. Remember, the IE notation indicates that tener will undergo spelling change except with nosotros and vosotros. All right, now let's look at the forms of the irregular verb to have. I have translates to yo tengo. Try that, please. Yo tengo. Remember, it is not yo tieno as a regular verb might have been. It is yo tengo. Good. Now, we have becomes nosotros tenemos. Can you try that? Nosotros tenemos. Informally, for singular context, you have becomes tú tienes. One more time. Tú tienes. And its plural form is vosotros tenéis. Can you try that? Vosotros tenéis. Formally, you have and he or she has is translated as usted tiene or él or ella tiene. The plural forms you have or they have translate to ustedes tienen or ellos or ellas tienen. Did you notice? The forms of to have or tener are exactly the same as a verb ending in er, except with I or yo, where it takes up the form of tengo. Great! All right, going back to our sentence, do you have any siblings? You translates to tú. Have is translated as tener, but here it does not translate to tener as we have to change its form with tú. And siblings is hermanos. Try that, please. Hermanos. Remember that we just convert the statement into a question tone by adding inverted and regular question marks. Now using the right form of tener, word by word, our sentence reads as you becomes tú, have is translated as tienes, and siblings is hermanos. Remember that informally and for singular context, you have translates to tienes. So our sentence, do you have siblings, translates to ¿Tienes hermanos? Try once again. ¿Tienes hermanos? Remember, hermanos could mean mixed siblings or boys and girls, or it could mean just male siblings. However, if we want to refer to only female siblings, we would use hermanas. Let's now look at how we will reply to do you have any siblings? We can reply by saying, yes, I have two siblings. Looking at it word by word, yes translates to si. I have is yo tener, but with yo, to have does not translate to tener. We need to change its form. Two is dos. One more time. Dos. And finally, siblings translates to hermanos. We know that with yo, to have takes up the form of tengo. So looking at our sentence word by word, yes translates to si. I have is yo tengo. Two is dos. And siblings translates to hermanos. So now you know, yes, I have two siblings translates to si. Tengo dos hermanos. Try that yourself, please. Si, sí, tengo dos hermanos. Where I have is yo tengo. Excellent. Let's now try the first half of our conversation. Lisa, do you have any siblings? Mark, yes, I have two siblings. Mark, and you? Lisa, I have one brother and one sister. Based on the translations we just learned, do you have siblings translates to tienes hermanos? Can you try the translation for do you have any siblings yourself? It is tienes hermanos? The reply, yes, I have two siblings, is sí, tengo dos hermanos. Moving on, 
and you becomes y tú. And finally, I have one brother and one sister is tengo un hermano y una hermana. Try that one more time. I have one brother and one sister. The translation is tengo un hermano y una hermana. Very good. All right, it's quiz time. How will you translate, I have two sisters? Will you say, tengo dos hermanas? Or, tiene dos hermanas? Or, tengo dos hermanos? I have two sisters translates to, tengo dos hermanas. Did you get that right? Now try, he has two siblings, and assume mixed siblings. Is it, él tienes dos hermanos? Or, él tiene dos hermanos? Or, él tiene dos hermanas? He has two siblings becomes, él tiene dos hermanos. How did you do there? Try that one more time. Él tiene dos hermanos. Very good. Let's now look at the second part of our conversation, talking about pets. Here's some vocabulary to help us with the conversations. Pets translates to mascotas. Cat is gato or gata. Try these, please. Gato or gata. Dog becomes perro or perra. Fish translates to peth. Can you try that? Peth. Parrot is translated as loro. And bird is pájaro. Say that yourself, please. Pájaro. Remember that pescado also translates to fish, but it refers to dead fish, like in fish and chips. Great! A quick memory tip here. An easy way to remember the fact that pets are called mascotas is that mascots are usually animals. Note that double R in Spanish can also be referred to as rolled R. The pronunciation is almost with a vibrating sound. So try saying... Perro, which means dog again. It is perro. A quick grammar tip here. A cat translates to gato. However, if you want to explicitly say that you have a female cat or a male cat, then add words like una for female and un for male before the word gato. Also change gato to gata for female forms. Very good. So here's our conversation again. Do you have pets? Translates to ¿Tienes mascotas? Try it yourself. ¿Tienes mascotas? Yes, I have a dog and a female cat. Becomes Sí, tengo un perro y una gata. Finally, good. I have two cats is translated as bien, tengo dos gatos. Try that one more time. Bien, tengo dos gatos. Some more quizzes. How will you translate a female dog? Is it una perro or una perra? Or, perro. A female dog becomes una perra. Note the use of una and change of perro to perra. Let's revise the forms of the irregular verb to have. I have translates to yo tengo. Remember, it is not yo tieno, as a regular verb might have been. It is yo 
tengo. Good. Now, we have becomes nosotros tenemos. Informally, for singular context, you have becomes tú tienes. One more time. Tú tienes. And its plural form is vosotros tenéis. Formally, you have and he or she has is translated as usted tiene or él or ella tiene. The plural forms you have or they have translates to ustedes tienen or ellos or ellas tienen. And here is the vocabulary for the names of pets again. Pets translates to mascotas. Cat is gato or gata. Try these, please. Gato or gata. Dog becomes perro or perra. Fish translates to peth. Can you try that? Peth. Parrot is translated as loro. And bird is pájaro. Say that yourself, please. Pájaro. All right, it's time for the fun part. It's time for our culture leaf of the day. Today, we talk about quinceañera, which literally means one girl who is 15. It is the celebration of a girl's 15th birthday in parts of Latin America. In this celebration, the quinceañera is accompanied by her parents, godparents, court of honor, friends, and family. The birthday girl usually delivers 15 candles to people who she considers were most influential in her development during her 15 years. It is often accompanied by a speech. This ceremony is also known as the Tree of Life. The ceremony includes a formal entry. A grand entrance by the quinceañera is made once most guests have been seated. There's also a formal toast, which is optional but usually a part of the reception generally initiated by the parents or godparents of the birthday girl. Other festivities include a first dance, which is usually a waltz where the girl dances with her father. It also includes a family dance, which is usually a waltz involving just the immediate relatives, the godparents, and the closest friends of the girl. The most popular gifts given on the occasion are Chocolates, perfumes, clothes, makeup, and handbags. In the next lesson, we will learn making some small talk with new people. We hope you enjoyed your lesson today. See you in the alley for the next one. <laughs>